Here in North Carolina, we're in Greenville, taking a look at their local mall. Yes, I said North Carolina. Greenville exists here too. With that out of the way, let's take a look and see how the Greenville Mall is going. Lo and behold, not only is there not a lot of information on Greenville Mall's life, but there is a ton of crosstalk between Greenville, North Carolina and Greenville, South Carolina, which made research a pain in the ass. Greenville Mall actually dates back to the 60s, but it wasn't an actual mall back then. It used to be a strip mall known as Pitt Plaza and was being constructed in 1965 with an anticipated opening date in 1966. The company behind the center, W.B. Leverton & Associates, was also responsible for the Patrick Henry Mall in Virginia. Not the one near Newport News, but the one in Martinsville. J.C. Penney was reported to be the only primary anchor on site at the time, and as of the making of this video, J.C. Penney is still at the center to this day. A Roses was also reported to be on site. Pitt Plaza would remain the way it was throughout the 70s, being a modest shopping center for the growing town of Greenville at the time. But in 1984, it was announced that the new owner of the plaza, Pentagon Properties, would convert the plaza into an enclosed mall known as Just the Plaza. Very original. The mall even got an expansion in 1989, bringing forward a new Belk store, as well as a Brody's. Brody's would get acquired by Profits in 1998, and Colonial Properties would obtain ownership of the Plaza Mall around the same time. Colonial Properties would rebrand the Plaza Mall into the Colonial Greenville Mall. Yeah, we're getting creative, aren't we? Meanwhile, when Roses would close in the 90s due to financial issues, Belk would opt to open a secondary home store in its place, marking Belk's beginnings as a dual anchor setup at the mall. Profits would then get acquired by Belk in 2005, and with more space to work with, the secondary home store would relocate to take Profits' place, but the former Roses wouldn't remain vacant for long, as Stephen Berry's came to fill in the void. But Stephen Berry's didn't last long either, as they instantly hit financial issues and then closed their doors in 2009. Today, that space is filled in by Dunham Sports. And during all of this, Colonial Properties would sell off many of their malls, including this one, and the Colonial Mall in Greenville would be sold to an unnamed Australian company before eventually landing in Brookfield Properties' portfolio as of the making of this video. And by then, its name had long since been changed to the very creative and extremely original Greenville Mall. Overall, Greenville Mall is relatively healthy and doing just fine for itself, with two Belk stores, a Dunham Sports, and the long-standing J.C. Penney. Many years ago, in another video, I said that Greenville Mall is one of the few malls doing okay in eastern North Carolina, and today, that's still true. In fact, it's even more true. Wilson Mall will soon cease to exist if it hasn't already, and that's been closed for nearly a decade now. Vernon Park Mall is also closed, and that one closed quietly. Goldsboro's Berkeley Mall barely holds a candle to this mall. Golden East Crossing in Rocky Mount is just not doing well. And Park Hill Mall? Well, when I did that video, no one seemed to care about it, which would tell you everything you need to know. The only two malls I can find in eastern North Carolina that are doing well are Jacksonville Mall and the Independence Mall in Wilmington. 
No, don't even mention Delaware or Florida. We are in North Carolina. But here? Greenville Mall is doing just fine. But you can tell there are cracks starting to show. Well, we can only wait and see what fate awaits this mall. The mall looks like it's straight out of the 80s, and while it doesn't look ugly by any means, at least to me, it is very plain. Malls owned and renovated by colonial properties are very recognizable to me, as I've already seen two other malls that look very close to this. Although the pillars in the center core, as well as the planters, give it some more unique features to make it stand out, just a bit more. While a renovation would be necessary to update its image and make it fresh again, there are two things that stick in my mind. One, would the owners want to invest that money into a troubled mall? And two, I don't trust the renovation would look good at all as we drift further and further into prison-style minimalism and depressing color schemes like gray and blue. Greenville itself, although appearing to be a mixed bag on area vibes with crime problems and poor employment figures, it appears to be doing well, and has been growing over the decades. I believe part of this comes down to it being a college town, however. Now, while crime is bad, don't worry if you suffer any major injuries, because North Carolina has some apparently phenomenal health care, Greenville included. However, employment is still a big issue here, with people making less money overall, and the unemployment rate being about just under 8%. And that is where Greenville is really going to see some problems. And some locals don't have a very positive outlook on this city either, as some say it's just average at best. So it's very possible this mall may just wither away over time. In fact, it might be withering right now. But that's just what I found skimming around. If any locals want to chime in, do share your insight on Greenville and how it's doing. That's got to be the most boring JCPenney facade I have ever seen. Now, one thing you could do with shopping malls, and many have done this over the years, and some still do it to this day, is community events. While there are some events that take place here at the Greenville Mall, they're usually only seasonal, like that Easter event in the center court. And I haven't been able to find much of what's happening here at the Greenville Mall. Perhaps people should think more on community events, like local performances, shows, meetings, Help, do a movie night, I don't care. Small things like that could really help give them all a place and foster a sense of community. Although, given the general sentiment of the internet, I get the feeling this too will be forsaken. Oh well, I guess it's easier for us to tell one another to go die on social media. Thanks for having me, Greenville, North Carolina. And this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Greenville Mall farewell and good luck in this mad, mad, mad world.
You ever walk so much that you develop a limp? This has been one of those times.